What's up, YouTube? My name is Spencer. I'm the owner and operator of San Diego iPhone Repair, serving North County San Diego, and most recently, Temecula Valley. In this video, I'll be going over the pros and cons of the different back glass repair methods. Customer education is one of the more difficult parts of this business. There is only so much that I can fit into a conversation, so this video helps make sure I don't miss anything. If you have any questions about anything I went over, feel free to leave a comment or reach out to me directly. Back glass repair comes in two forms, glass only and housing replacements. There is more than one way to perform each of those repairs, and there are definitely pros and cons to each. Not every repair shop will take the time to explain this to every customer. Some do, most won't, hence the point of this video. The first way is replacing just the back glass panel. This involves a machine, that lasers off the glue holding the glass to the housing. From there, it's just a matter of removing the broken glass, cleaning up the remaining adhesive, and replacing it with a new glass panel. There are two ways to perform this repair. Most shops opt for the least time consuming and don't disassemble the device. Others like mine remove the most sensitive components like the screen, battery, and logic board. To a DIYer, this is mostly out of reach, mainly due to the prohibitive cost of the laser machine, which is incredibly impractical for a one-time repair. The pros and cons to no disassembly. To the shop owner, it's considerably less time, which often translates to a lower price point. That's the only benefit. Now for the cons. It's incredibly difficult to keep glass shards from getting inside of the device during the repair process. And on more than one occasion, I've seen these glass shards puncture the battery or get stuck between the battery and screen, creating a visible pressure bump, which won't go away, go away even if the glass is removed. I have also seen on more than one occasion the battery swelling and needing to be replaced from either glass shards puncturing or accidentally from a razor blade slipping during the glass removal process. The nature of using a razor blade to clean up broken glass around very sensitive components like flex cables, logic boards, and batteries means the possibility of damaging one of those during the process is higher than if those components were removed and out of the way, which leads me to my next option. The same glass back repair, but removing all of the sensitive components to mitigate risk. This is the only way I will perform this type of repair for all the reasons I just mentioned, and I'm not the only repair shop who feels this way. As far as I'm concerned, there's nothing inherently wrong with the glass only option. As long as it's performed the safer way, by a skilled technician using quality parts and a strong commitment to quality workmanship. The second way to perform this repair is by replacing the housing. If your housing is cracked, bent, or badly damaged, this is the only option. It's just a matter of removing and transferring all of the components from the old into the new housing. To DIYers out there, some vendors sell housings with small parts pre-installed, which can make the repair process a lot smoother as it is incredibly tedious to disassemble and reassemble the whole device. My preferred option is using genuine Apple housings sourced from a donor device, otherwise known as an OEM pull housing. These are by far the best for a few reasons. First, it's a genuine Apple part, which is the highest quality both in durability and functionality compared to its aftermarket counterpart. And second, all of the flex cables are intact and haven't been touched or tampered with. Whether you are, are a DIYer or a professional tech, OEM pull housings usually mean less work and less risk as you're physically interacting with less components and flex cables compared to a full teardown. It's a matter of transferring the logic board, screen, battery, front and rear cameras, and you're done. This is a sub 30 minute repair compared to over an hour for a full teardown. In my opinion, there are only two sides to OEM pull housings. First, they are generally more expensive than aftermarket housings or glass only repairs, but once again, they are much higher quality. Second, the only way to get an OEM pull is from a used device, so condition is gonna vary, but can be easily mitigated by opting for higher quality A or B condition. As far as I'm concerned, the good, which is quality and durability, outweighs the bad, which is price, by a long shot. This is usually a conversation I try to have with each customer and help them determine which is going to be better for them as there isn't one right option. About half of my business is customers needing their device fixed so they can turn it into their carrier for some sort of promotion. 
In that scenario, least expensive is usually the way to go. If you plan to hold on to your device for a while, I usually suggest going with a higher quality part. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments.